so we can move on and the next section is probably one of the um, key or un yeah key unique things about Gen 2 apart from its very powerful package management system portage which I guess is, is kind of partly to do with it um, it's the fact that we can set flags and change settings to alter how packages are installed and compiled for that matter so they've got this um, file called make.conf which is like a um, configuration file for global settings to do with the um, portage installation system so generally what you put in make.conf affects the whole system there are some other configuration files that we'll look at a little bit later on which <coughs> affect um, make make um, changes on a per package basis so they're more fine grained and generally changes you make here can be overridden um, either on the command line or by the other um, more specific more fine grained um, configuration files <coughs> but for the time being uh, we'll look at this global file <coughs> called make.conf I guess the reason why it's called make.conf is because it governs how um, packages are built um, generally using the make command um, so they use nano uh, I don't use that normally I, I'm getting a bit of a twizzle with it because I try to use via commands in it when I'm using it although it's a uh, it's a nice easy to use text editor um, it's up to you to ha how you want to edit the files but one advantage you get with Vi is that you get a lot more color highlighting so if syntax highlighting is your thing Vi, Vi does give you a lot more colors um, I think Nano does do some coloring but it's um, limited compared to Vi as I remember um, in fact let's just try and have a look at this um, make.conf so again just bear bear with me while it loads off the CD-ROM yeah you've got um, uh, like I say very basic colouring it's highlighted the comments in green and it's highlighted uh, variables uh, variable values in blue <clears throat> so like I say I'm going to use VI um, as I prefer it and you do okay <laughs> After what I've just said, you don't get any highlighting on the mineral installation CD. So, ah, right, okay, I may go back to Nano. No, I won't. Um, I do get confused with the the keystrokes. I forget where I am. Um, anyway, so it says that you can view this file here for um, a listing of all possible variables. Um, but the handbook goes through and uh, identifies like the minimum if you like that needs to be set for a successful Gen 2 installation so I'll just be going through there and if you want to look through the example file to tweak things further then um, that's its location and as it says here you can see there's basically two lines there's a comment that begins with a hash and then there's a, a variable name and it's followed by an equal sign and it's assignment so it's quite simple So the first two things it mentions <coughs> are C flags and CXX flags. Well, um, obviously the manual's not been updated because they now include FC flags and FF flags. Um, and they've got these two flags in like a common flags variable, which is substituted into each of the individual flags variables. And basically these are the... Um, switches or parameters that are sent to GCC and the um, G++ um, compilers so C flags is for the C compiler and CXX flags is for the C++ compiler 
and you can see by default they've added in um, this flag here which means use optimization level 2 which is fairly standard I'd say and it's also set, told it to use a um, generic that is a generic 686 instruction set um, if we go to the online GNU manuals these are quite interesting um, can we view the online ones looks like it's that one there um, we need to look for is this one here optimization yeah so you can see they've got minus o minus o one they do the same thing and it does some optimizing it tells you what flags it turns on and then o2 which is optimized even more so it turns all these flags on plus all these flags to <clears throat> basically get um, a combination of small a smaller binary and a faster binary then there's an O3 as well which uh, optimizes even more but that's generally frowned on it can break some uh, compiling so unless you really know what you're doing I wouldn't use the O3 and there's a couple of others for optimizing to reduce compilation time reduce size fast compiling for debugging um, so generally O2 is a good option so I'd leave that one as it is um, if we look down for the march option are these flags yeah these are all flags aren't they yeah so we need to go to another chapter for that one <coughs> um, Right, yeah, this is a machine dependent options, which is why it starts with a minus M, all the options to these. So we want um, an Intel x86. So it's this one here, it's got Windows options here. If you're running GCC under Windows, obviously we're not. So you can see the march affects the or changes the compiler to, do, to produce instructions for the specified CPU type. So if we were to, well, there you go, there's i686, there's a generic Pentium Pro 686, and it'll run on all 686 families. But this does mean that if we compile to this level, then the code that's produced will not run on any earlier um, processor, so it will not run on a Pentium, or oh, sorry, will run on a Pentium Pro. It won't run on a Pentium MMX or a 486, for example. So it's something worth bearing in mind if you want to produce binaries that are portable and you can see there's a load of other architectures um, and more recent stuff's got all these extra uh, sort of multimedia type instructions so these are all the Intel processors that there are some for AMD so you can see it starts off with a K6, the K6 2 and 3 and what I'm interested in um, is the Athlon MP. Um, now these three all mean the same thing so I could put in Athlon-4, Athlon-XP or Ath Athlon-MP. I'm actually going to put in Athlon MP because that's obviously more descriptive of the system that I'm on but it, it wouldn't really matter. <coughs> so I'll just paste that in. Oh. I've obviously copied that incorrectly. Let's try that again. Athlon MP. So this means that any new compilation that happens is going to be optimizing the uh, instructions specifically for the Athlon that, uh, that's in the two Athlons that are in this system. It also means, therefore, if I transfer the binaries produced, i.e. Maybe I wanted to copy the partition with an install Gen 2 to another machine. It's not going to work or is unlikely to work on any Intel machine. If it did run, it probably wouldn't perform as well because it will optimize it differently. And as you can see, it optimizes it 
was the Athlon CPU that's got MMX 3D now, enhanced 3D now, and the full SSE instruction set support. Now the next um, switch, I'm not going to bother looking up, but pipe, what that does, it when uh, the compiler is creating temporary files, rather than creating temporary files on disk, it will do it in memory through a pipe. Um, so it just makes it a little bit more efficient, a little bit faster. Um, so it's worth leaving that in there. The other option I'm going to put in here for now is this mtune CPU type and this doesn't affect the instructions that are produced so I could tune this to a 686 and run the code on a 486 if you ignore the the march option um, so what this does is just optimize um, the code that's generated for the specific CPU so obviously I want to optimize it for this process of the Athlon MP. So what I'm going to do is add in mtune as well and also type in my Athlon MP. And generally that's a fairly safe set of flags to be using. Um, if you do start adding other some of these other machine dependent um, switches and indeed some of the other flags you can start to produce code either won't run or won't compile um, it's for this reason that I, when I'm building LFS I don't tend to uh, change the C flags or CXX flags in case uh, the output codes affected and in fact it does say here that um, about all these things. Um, this FOMIT frame pointer, I believe that's now included in the optimization two upwards, maybe even sooner. Uh, let's go back. Optimization. Oh, no, not that one. That one. F. Yeah, there is a FOMIT frame pointer, so that's with O1. So O2 includes everything that O1's got. So there's no real need to add that in. Um, I've still got some boxes that have got that in when I believe it wasn't a default. Um, but as you can see, that's not necessary anymore. You can um, just uh, leave that out. Um, one other one I do normally add in although Gen 2 does take care of this, is minus S. It strips the binaries of some of the debugging, I believe. Um, but I think, I'm pretty sure when Gen 2 builds a package, right at the very end, it does strip them. But So that's kind of an optional one, I guess, if you want to put that in or not. So that's the flags for the compilers. Um, oh, yes, there's also this... Um, there's two articles here about optimization. So it goes into a little bit more detail about setting them and optimizing. Um, oh, yeah, it says this CPU ID to CPU flags will be. I'll leave this page up actually to set that because that's useful to have because there are additional flags, for example, the SSE on this particular processor and the 3D now and the MMX. Um, and obviously if you've got a newer machines such as this one, you've got all these extra multimedia type um, instructions which can be activated for certain packages, we'll take advantage of them. Um, yeah, there's an example there for an Athlon 64, 64-bit Athlon. Uh, yeah, there's a bit more information about the different compiler levels, optimization levels. There's some information about the pipe. As you can see, it has no effect on generated code, but it can make the process faster for compiling. Um, as you can see, it uses temporary files. Um, yeah, it says here, if FOMIT frame pointer is turned on at all levels except for minus O0. <coughs> Um,
Yeah, so there's some caveats there about it. It does make troubleshooting applications, so if you're debugging, you might not want to use it, and therefore you might not want to, want to use the minus S. Um, yeah, then some of these SIMD extensions options. Um, it says to cat proc CPU info to find out if your processor does these, or you can run that CPU ID um, program, which is not installed by default, I don't think, but you can. Um, we will install it. There's something there about LTO and PGO as well, profile guided optimization. Um, I've had mixed experiences with LTO. Sometimes I get code that works well, and other times I'm things are some sometimes happening that I'm not quite sure about. It does say that it's still a common source of problems, so I wouldn't really bother setting that on GCC. Um, PGO I've used, I don't think that's caused me any problems, but like it says, it does increase compile time quite a lot um, for probably a minor improvements in performance, so you might want to turn that on possibly. Um, so I'm going to leave this page up at the CPUID bit so that we can add that into the make.conf. Um, then there's this web page which has got some example um, C flags which are considered safe in Gen 2 and probably in general actually for um, GCC in general. Um, so you can see they've got, if you can identify your processor using um, procs ls CPU, is it CPU info if I save this cat proc if I type CPU info so you can see it's um, looking at this sort of information here it looks at those four lines there so if I was to do a search on here for Athlon, <clears throat> so it's an Athlon 2, Athlon 64, 64, doesn't look like there's any 32-bit information here, unfortunately. No, so there's no recommendations for that, but um, I'm pretty sure the settings I've used would be suitable, but obviously if you're building on a new machine, there's some suggestions there which would be good to go with <clears throat> so let's go back to the make.conf um, there's a make ops variable which is kind of the equivalent to the make flags variable that we use for make uh, I've never seen any other option in this make ops variable but I imagine it could probably have something else inside it but apart from that it's the same as the make flags variable the make the make program uses. So if I insert a line here and put this make ops in as I do here, generally you want to specify the number of jobs as the number of processes you've got. So or number of cores. So I've got two processors, minus J2 is a good good setting. There is one warning though that when we emerge jobs, which is how we build the packages in Gen 2, there's a job setting for the emerge program which specifies how many jobs can how many packages can be built at the same time. And you have to consider that each job that runs in emerge will issue a make op. So each job will be running make with this number of jobs. So if I run um, emerge with two jobs that means in theory up to four threads could be running and I haven't got that number of processes so you can see that you've got to be careful how many jobs you do get running um, if you've got a make ops with uh, J4 for example and you set the number of jobs in parallel to run with emerge at 10 for example that's 40 threads that are needed so you'd need in theory 40 cores or 40 processors so you have to balance up what's more important to get more jobs done or more threads per job done. Generally, I find it's best to set this to the number of cores or, or processes you've got and limit the number of jobs. 
Um, and I'll show you that when we come to actually compiling stuff. Um, so I'm going to save this now. What I might do before we carry on is actually try and install this CPU ID to CPU flags. So what we do to install stuff, the command is emerge and then you just type the name of the package. So in this case, well the program name is CDUI, C CPU ID to CPU flags. I think the package name is the same. If we're not sure, we can put in, for example, part of the name. All right, okay. We, oh, yes, we're not in the true environments. So that won't work. Okay, so we'll come back to that. So for the time being, we haven't got complete optimization because we haven't specified some of these um, uh, multimedia uh, options that the processor is capable of. 